All right, everybody, it's Neil, and I'm here with your Friday full body finisher workout. Um, so today I have an AMRAP workout for you. Um, it's going to be an AMRAP of 15 minutes. As you can see in the description, I have a list of uh, exercises. It is going to be uh, a kind of ascending and descending pyramid of reps. Um, the exercises are going to be burpees, we have kettlebell triceps, we have body weight squats, push-ups, and then overhead squats. So really, I wanted to, you know, today kind of break down the burpee and also uh, break down the overhead squat, something that I have not perfected. Um, if you have lack of shoulder mobility and upper back mobility, like I do, overhead squats can be extremely difficult. But they can also be extremely beneficial to improving your mobility. Um, so that's why I wanted to kind of give an explanation, demonstration, and incorporate them in today's workout and hopefully have you get after the workout um, and get some benefit from these. Um, so um, we're going to go through a little bit of a warm up, um, do a little bit of foam rolling, and I'm going to demonstrate some of the exercises. Um, but for the workout, it is going to be doing 10 burpees, it's going to be doing 15 kettlebell tricep extensions, then it's going to be doing 20 bodyweight squats, 15 push ups, and then 10 of the overhead squats. Um, so I'm going to do the first round with you, um, to kind of set a pace. Um, as you've noticed with a lot of these AMRAPs, everyone does it at their own pace. So at that point, after the first round, you're going to keep going on your own, continue the workout. It'd be great to hear from you to let me know what you get uh, for your amount of rounds for the workout. Um, so when it comes to scoring an AMRAP workout, if you did, let's say, five rounds and you're on the sixth round and you did the 10 burpees, you did the 15 uh, kettlebell tricep extensions, and then you get two body weight squats and the 15 minutes run, runs out, you would combine the 10 plus the 15 and the two reps, which equals 27. So your score would be five rounds plus 27 reps. Um, so let me know how you do with these AMRAP workouts, drop it in the comments. Um, let me know that your, your score, hit a thumbs up. Let me know if you're watching this. If you have any questions, like to see anything different, um, just let me know that you're out there. So uh, for today, we're gonna, as I said, do the warm up, and then I'm gonna get after it and show you these, these exercises. Um, but for today's workout, I'm gonna recommend that hopefully you have a foam roller. If you don't, you can skip ahead for the next minute or two. So I'm gonna show some foam roller stuff. Um, if you don't have one, I recommend that you get one. So with the foam roller, basically, you can take a seat on it, and you're going to just roll out. Working out some of those kinks in the back. I always like doing this before a workout. It's a great way to get your body loosened up. Find those tight areas. And then, turn to the side, you can get a little more lat work. So then, one thing to think about that I should mention with these overhead squats, because I want to show those for today, is that if you have something long, um, now from here, while we're down, I want you just to do a hamstring stretch to reach forward towards those toes. If you have something long, uh, like preferably like I'm going to show you here with a piece of PVC pipe, um, other things that may work if you have it laying around the house if you're watching this at home um, would be like a uh, broom handle or a broomstick or a mop if you can unscrew it from your mop or from your broomstick. So if you have one of those things that you think might work, you need to be able to put your hands out fairly wide. You don't want them straight up. Um, even for a lot of people using like a weighted body bar, uh, like I know our health fitness specialist Joey, uh, he does a lot of uh, workouts that incorporate the uh, body bar. Now we're going to switch, just go to one leg in front of you, reaching towards it. Um, so when it comes to the body bars, a lot of times people can't get their hands wide enough on those to properly do the overhead squat. Um, if you're super you know, loose and flexible in your shoulders and, and upper back, uh, you would be able to, to do that just fine. Um, but really I find you need something a little bit longer than, than a body bar. Um, so which is where uh, an Olympic barbell, if you happen to have one of those kicking around your house, it works great. If you're doing it down here in the fitness center, um, you can put your hands out to the edge. We also have 
Um, a, uh, another bar um, that basically is 23 pounds, um, which is uh, a lighter bar. Most Olympic bars are 45 pounds. So we do have that bar here in the studio as well, which could be great for overhead squats if you're just getting started. Um, but just want to throw that out there. So to do a little bit of a warm up for the shoulders, if you have something um, that's long, um, you can use a piece of PVC pipe, whether it's electrical PVC or like plumbing PVC, you don't want it to be too thick in diameter. Um, and you're doing pass through. So you're coming up and over the head, and this is why I also recommend potentially a mop stick or a broom stick, you can just unscrew it, and that a lot of times will be long enough to work. So this, by coming up and over, is loosening up our shoulders, just getting that nice rotation. If you bring your hands too close together, it doesn't work, you can't get up and over, you'll find that point, and then you can start to come up and over, getting that rotation going on, now we're going to do around the worlds, just getting that rotation, coming around, reversing direction, this is great for that shoulder mobility, and then you can even do some overhead presses, whether it's behind the head or in front of the head, just loosening up those Shoulders, all right. So now, why we have hopefully this out, um, to go through an overhead squat. The tough part with an overhead squat is if you don't have the shoulder mobility and flexibility like I've been mentioning, people have a typical tendency, like myself included, when they go down, what will be happening is, is they tend to lean forward, have a lot of forward flexion. Obviously, if you have weight on the bar, that makes it really hard because it's not going to be good because so you have all that weight coming forward carrying you out of a squat. So the main thing to focus on when doing an overhead squat is you want to think about pushing your arms up to the ceiling. It's like you're pushing that ceiling away from you as you go down so you can open up those palms and you also want to make sure that as you, your arms are wide enough to allow yourself enough room so as I'm going down, I'm pushing that bar up ahead. Ideally in a perfect world, that bar wouldn't come forward like, like it just happened to me. It would stay straight above that head and then back up. So the weight is coming down through the center of your body and that bar is staying in that perfect straight line. Um, so there's certain things that you can do to get better at the overhead squats and to loosen up that shoulder mobility and flexibility. There's tons of stretches that you can do um, for that. Um, but one thing that I've found that really helps me when I'm trying to get in a routine of regularly doing overhead squats and to keep my shoulders loose, is simply using a box. What the box allows you for is as you get to the bottom of an overhead squat, so you sit down, you get to here, you find if you're forward, you can straighten yourself up and then stand up. Especially as you add weight to it, like with a bar, that's gonna allow you to get that proper form, but also shift that weight by sitting down on a box or a bench, or even in a chair, um, to, to get back up and align that back properly, get the shoulders back. Um, so that's something that I really recommend practicing. And trust me, it is a great stretch just doing overhead squats. So if you have dumbbells, you can also do it with dumbbells. If you have kettlebells, some lighter ones, you can let them go behind your wrists. Um, but oftentimes people find it actually harder than having a barbell when you add even just light weights in the equation. Any problems that you have in your form are going to get exacerbated as you come down and back up. Um, so hopefully you don't have tight shoulders and tight upper back muscles like I do, um, struggling with the overhead squat, because um, just the motion itself is a huge stretch. So that's something that I wanted to go through, so to practice, uh, we're going to now just go ahead and with your, your, uh, your piece of PVC or your broomstick, whatever you have, we're going to do 10 of these overhead squats together, all right? So we're going to get that up. We're getting ready. We want to be maybe a little bit wider than normal stance. Point your toes out. And we're going to go down and practice 10 squats. So one, trying to keep that chest up, looking up at the ceiling. Push those hands away. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then last one, ten. I'm really feeling it in my shoulders. I can feel that stretch and pull. Let me know what you're experiencing. Do you have tight shoulders? Are you sitting here just feeling like, Neil, I don't know what you're talking about. This is easy for me. It's not any challenging than any other normal squat, especially with no weight. Um, let me know how you do with adding weights. Um, for the workout today, I'm actually just gonna stick with using the bar um, to show you that first round. Um, Cause you wanna look at form first. You don't wanna add weight and resistance on bad form. One of the examples that I commonly give is when people are doing shoulder presses. If I tell them to do an overhead press and they're doing this because their shoulders are so tight they can't come straight up and down, or if you can't stay like against a wall, and the bar's in the way, but if you can't stay against the wall and with your back flat, and keep your elbows and arms along that wall as you track up. You have to come out like this. That means you need to work on your shoulder mobility and flexibility and practice doing something like that because you already have enough resistance. Um, and trust me, it's like you have heavy weights that you're trying to press up and down. All right, so now the next one is we're going to practice the burpee. So everybody seems to hate burpees, myself included. Um, so uh, to do a not only proper burpee, but to do an efficient burpee, you want to get really fluid with the, with the steps of a burpee. So you put your hands down, so I'll make sure I'm in frame here, your hands down, you want to hop your feet out, and then ideally you come to where your chest is down, and then you want to hop back in. When you do it, you don't want to hop to where you're just here, because then you still have to either bring your hands back, or still get your feet all the way in, or you come up and hop to the top. You want to make sure you're getting your feet all the way in. So I'm taking that big hop back, chest down. Now as I start to come up and push out of it, I want to bring my feet all the way in towards my hands so they're underneath me so I can come up and jump. So now we're going to do 10 of these together, all right? We're going down, out, in, up. There's one, down, out, two, Three, actually I lied. We're only gonna do five of these because we still got the workout ahead of us, but I want you to get that motion, making sure that, especially as you get tired, you want to complete each step. You don't want to start shortchanging yourself and getting sloppy to where you're only coming in part way, you have to take the extra stagger step because it's wasted time and it's wasted motion. Alright, so then the body weight squats, those are pretty explanatory push-ups. Um, I know I've demonstrated a lot of this before, but if you have a wall, you can go to a wall, you can do wall push-ups. Um, you want to make sure your hands are low enough on the wall so not up here, so not working all shoulders. You can do the push-ups on your knees um, to where you're bringing your chest to the ground. But again, focus on using those chest muscles. Um, the other option with this as well is that you can, whether it's in a modified or a full push-up, you can, instead of lowering your body down, you can focus on pushing up and then transferring to your forearms, resetting your hands, and coming back up. You can do that as well on your toes for the push-up too. Um, so then we have the kettlebell tricep extensions. So I'm gonna grab a kettlebell. So with the kettlebell, you step back enough, you're going to simply come up and down and doing that. So um, for the workout, as I said, it's the ascending and descending pyramid of reps, starting with 10 burpees, then doing 15 of the kettlebell triceps, 20 bodyweight squats, 15 push-ups, and then 10 of those overhead squats. If you can do some weight and still keep good form, go for it. Um, if you can't and you just want to use um, the PVC or broomstick or whatever you have, or even just holding your arms up, trying to keep those shoulders back, go for it as well. It's just a different type of squat. Um, and then lastly, like I've mentioned, if you're really struggling to keep yourself up, 
This is a perfect time to practice using an aid or assistance. So when you get down, you find yourself leaning forward too much, straighten yourself up and stand up. Even though we are doing this workout, see as many rounds as possible as we can get. I want you to keep good form, especially on the overhead squats and the burpees, all right? The burpees are gonna start to suck in previous rounds. Um, so the other option that you can do is if you find that the hopping piece is difficult, if when you bring your arms down, you hop out and you come down, back up, and the hopping's getting sloppy, you can step in and come up, boom, step down, step back, chest down, step in, step in, and then up. So there are your variations. All right, well, we're gonna get ready to begin the workout. I'm gonna do the first round with you, and then you're gonna keep going on your own. Um, so we're gonna get rolling here. We're starting off with the 10 burpees. Get your weights ready for the kettlebell triceps, whatever you're gonna use for the overhead squats. You might want a mat for your push-ups. Um, again, let me know after this workout how you did. So, I hope everyone's set up. I hope everyone's ready. And we're gonna start in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, 10 burpees. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's ten. All right, now we have the kettlebell triceps. Coming up and down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right. Twenty body weight squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. We're going for those 15 push-ups now. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right, last one. For me, and up the first round for you, Overhead squats. Use whatever you got. Toes out. There's one. Trying to keep those arms up. Push the ceiling away. Two, three, four, five, six. If you're struggling, move the arms out wider. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Keep it going. Back to those burpees. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the workout plan. I hope you enjoyed the demonstrations. Let me know if you have any questions, but thank you for doing the Friday full body finisher. I'll see you next week.